Getting work online for something you're already good at is difficult. What's even a lot harder is getting work for a skill that you are a total beginner or you have no experience in. My Upwork journey began in November 2017 with a skill that I had become good at and that is transcription. I had mastered the skill working for a dedicated transcription company. At that time, Upwork was just one of those sites that really fascinated me with the variety of work that was there. I wanted to grow on Upwork as well, but getting work for transcription was just so difficult. Even with the work I got, there were just one of gigs that didn't pay much. Somehow, I found my way out of transcription and into other skills like blog writing, podcast short notes writing, short form video editing, and even graphic design. In this video, I look back at my Upwork journey and transition from transcriptionist to short form video editor in particular. I will share the key job posts and cover letters in this transition, key conversations that I had with clients, two key lessons to take from all of this, and a special announcement at the end that you would not want to miss if you are serious about your online freelance career. Let's get into the video. My big break on Upwork came under very funny circumstances. So the client posted a job requiring SEO blog post services for podcasts. I was supposed to use the podcast transcription to edit that transcription and turn it into an SEO blog post. If you read the description here, we produce five podcast episodes weekly and growing from those we have transcriptions done by an AI. We require a super ninja who takes those transcriptions, typically 10,000 words, which are in conver conversation style, and turn them into SEO rich blog that is easily readable, along with show notes, keywords from that blog. So I read this, and the first thing that jumped at me was podcast transcription, full stop. And so I applied, but I did not apply to do blog posts. I applied to do transcription. And this was my cover letter. This is March 12th, 2021. I couldn't cringe more the more I read this in relation to the job posting because he clearly laid out that he wanted a blog post and I am really going all out on my transcription skills and experience. But it's just one of those things, I guess it was timing. Maybe my application was, I don't know, the, the only one at that particular hour. And then he says, thank you for your interest we have the transcription. So they already had the transcriptions and this makes the blog difficult to read. Goal is to go from conversation to a readable blog that is proofed and edited. Are you confident you could take that and edit it correctly? He was kind enough to reply to my transcription application and he actually repeated himself that I actually do not need transcription. I need a blog post and uh, show notes. I had never done a blog post before. I never done show notes before, but I nevertheless say that I was interested and up for the challenge. So this was basically a young me, novice me, he didn't know what I was doing uh, here. I really didn't, but uh, I just looked on the internet and Googled show notes, how to write show notes. And I basically learned in a very short time how to write podcast show notes and also read a bunch of things about blog posts and all that stuff. I was able to come up with stuff that he found okay. When I look back at those blog posts, at those show notes, I cringe. But for this particular client and at this particular time, they happen to be okay. And really that got me going in this direction of serving pod podcasts with show notes and uh, with blog posts, but more so with show notes. So that was basically my transition from transcriber to uh, podcast show notes and uh, blog post and it was a very big step in the direction of short form video editing that i eventually wound up in not so long after so next is the transition from show notes writer to short form video editor this was a job posting show notes highlights creator for podcast episode so by this time i had already known how to write very good show notes based on the, the previous client and also i managed to get some more clients who needed show notes so i really knew how to write good show notes uh, so this particular client needed show notes and the highlights creator for podcast episodes my job was to do the show notes but then in addition to doing the show notes i was supposed to highlight clips in the transcript that someone would take and make into a reel. So I applied for this in a much better way. And remember, this is one year after the horror 
proposal that I did that happened to be accepted. At this time, show notes was quite a niche. It was really niche. Not so many people knew about show notes writing or specialized in show notes writing. This is my proposal for this particular job. And then, yep, he got back. Hi, Daniel. This is a great portfolio you got. And you're exactly the type of person I would love to collaborate with. Yay. We basically negotiate with this client and the contract is signed. He has a couple of podcasts, which was great, which was great. I'm going to call this part the upsell where I con basically convince him that I can do reels as well. I really looked online on Instagram and all those other sites and I found out how to do reels, those reels with words and stuff like that. This is what I wrote to him. Hey client, I was wondering if your clients may be interested in other content like audiograms, reels, and engagement posts on social media, or might be interested in repurposing their podcast for YouTube, which exposes them to a much bigger audience. If so, I could help with that. Let me know what you think. And he responded, do you have an example of what that would be like? It would be reels that I would be interested in currently. I want to know what engagement posts entail so of course i don't have experience in reels i have zero experience in reels at this time what i do is i just go on the internet and i just look at the reels that i've seen there and i show him here are some examples of reels i haven't done these i've just seen them on the internet and uh, i think i could do them as well he looked at these reels and he was happy to oblige and this is what he said i have a project i would like for you to implement this on i had a client request a relatively fast around i need five clips i want your help with creative reels that will showcase what the person is talking about in the clip his client actually wants reels and that's how i start i start and then after a few trials we get on a call and we discuss what exactly he wants so after a few attempts at making the perfect reel i make uh, the last attempt and he loves it and there you go and i'm able to one sell more and two learn a new skill that really is important for me even right now as a freelancer that is how i evolved from being just a transcriber into a real editor and also other things like show notes and graphic designer my two key takeaways that you can learn from this experience from my experience if you are a new or aspiring freelancer is when you're starting out, you need to focus on your relationship with the client. Focus on having a good relationship, good understanding, very seamless communication, and that will be a good foundation for you to propose things and to upsell nicely in a nice way that actually adds value to the client. The second key takeaway from this is you have to have a growth mindset. So growth mindset was a term that was coined by this lady called Carol Dweck. The premise of a growth mindset is that people believe that their basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard, hard work. Intelligence or brains and talent are just a starting point. This view creates a love for learning and a resilience that is essential for great accomplishment. Intelligence, talent, they can be developed. It's not that family has uh, brilliant minds, no, no, no. These things can be developed and uh, enhanced with hard work and resilience. They are not fixed, they can be grown. Two takeaways, focus on the relationship with the client and not the money. And secondly, have a growth mindset. And lastly, the special announcement that I've been dying to tell you, which is the community I've created on Facebook called the Freelance Path finders community. The aim of this community is to empower aspiring freelancers and also equip you with the resources, uh, the skills, the tips, the knowledge needed to excel in this freelance landscape. I also intend it to be a space where new and experienced freelancers come together and share experiences, success stories, failure stories, so that you can learn what works, what doesn't work and the challenges that are common in this freelance landscape and how to overcome them. It's also an opportunity to grow with like-minded people. I believe that doing this alone may not be sustainable in the long run, but it will be an opportunity for you to grow with like-minded people. And this could be very essential in how far you go in, on this freelance journey. This community is on Facebook. It's called Freelance Pathfinders. To join it, go in the description and click that link take you to Facebook and then you'll be able to log in and join. If for whatever reason you can't access Facebook, download a VPN. My top recommendations are Winscribe and Browsec and I'm sure you'll be able to access this group. So go ahead, uh, join the group and I will see you uh, in the next video.